What's up, movie lovers? I'm your host Patrick, and today we're going to be talking about a movie called, Hobo with a Shotgun. The movie starts with an old hobo riding on a cargo train across the countryside. The train stops at a little station on a riverbank. He takes his small bag and gets off, entering a town called Hopetown, which is vandalized on the board to, Scumtown. In the next scene, the hobo is seen in the street wheeling around a shopping cart in the cold. He walks a bit further and sees a man with a film camera. He is filming two people who are in a fight. The man approaches the old hobo and offers him to participate in the fight for $10. The old man ignores him and moves along. The cameraman keeps filming the two people. They violently hit each other as the old man moves along the road. He approaches a trash can, where he finds an old cigarette. As he is looking at it, he hears screams behind him. He sees a man called Logan on the other side of the street. Logan has a manhole lid stuck on his neck. His hands are also tied and he is crying out for help, yelling that someone is after him. He runs up to many people and pleads for help, but they all refuse. Just then, a white car drifts onto the street. This is the same car that has been following Logan. He frantically asks the old hobo for his help but the old man ignores him. He starts to walk away with his cart and the cigarette in his mouth, but then all of a sudden, a truck appears and crashes into his cart. After that the truck approaches Logan. A man called Drake steps out of the truck, wearing a white suit. He is Logan's brother. The white car also comes over. Drake's two sons step out of it. They grab Logan as a girl removes the lid of a manhole on the sidewalk. They drop him in the hole. His head stays above ground with the lid stuck around it, on top of the hole. Drake gives a weird monologue about disowning and punishing his brother. He forces everyone on the street to watch his punishment. Logan interrupts him, begging him to stop. Drake responds to his interruption by putting his foot in Logan's mouth to shut him up. He puts a barbed wire around his neck. The wire is tied to a rope that is attached to the bumper of the white car. Drake cues his son to drive the car. When he drives the car, Logan's head is severed by its force. His torso starts to spray blood and a girl wearing a bathing suit starts to dance in the spray. Everyone watches in horror as Drake holds the severed head up to his face and warns everyone that they might be the next contestant of this game. He throws the head on a middle finger fixed on the car bonnet and they drive off. The hobo watches all this from behind a tree and walks off with his cart. As he is walking on the sidewalk he reaches a pawn shop. He looks at the TV from the window for a while and then his attention is diverted to a lawnmower. He reads the price which is $49.99. He takes a deep breath at the sight of the price tag and walks away. In the next scene, he is looking for some cardboard in a dumpster. He finds one and writes something on it but throws it away. He starts writing another one but throws it away as well. After that we see him sitting on a sidewalk at night with a sign saying, I'm tired. Need money for a lawnmower, as he is sitting there a group of rowdy teenagers approach him. One of them spits on his sign as they walk away from him and over to another young man to harass him. The hobo counts all the money he made, when he sees the white car stop on the side of the street. Drake's sons walk out and enter a building. The hobo follows them. Inside the building, the teenagers, who are part of Drake's gang, are torturing and killing people while riding bumper cars. One of the sons, named Slick, walks away from the cars, while Ivan stays. The hobo is watching all this from a corner. Slick approaches a kid named Elvis and threatens him to give back the money he owes him. A girl called Abby sees this and asks Slick to let him go. Her courage surprises him but he refuses. As he refuses her, Ivan shows up and breaks Elvis's arm on the arcade machine. They make him snort a lot of cocaine which they dump on the arcade machine. Everyone else starts snorting it as well. Slick goes over to Abby after that and starts to flirt. She asks for money and he agrees as he takes her to a back room. They start kissing, when a garage door opens to reveal a car and a man in the mask. Slick is about to kidnap the girl and put her in the car when the hobie shows up. He threatens him to leave her alone. Slick laughs at his threat and walks over to hit him but gets a punch to his face and the hobo knocks him out with his coin bag. After that, he asks the girl what she was thinking. In the next scene, he carries Slick over his shoulder, into a police station. He slams him on a desk and asks them to arrest him. He demands to see the chief of police. He is sent to wait in an interrogation room where he meets the chief. He asks him to get rid of the gangsters. The officer replies that he cannot do that, despite wanting to do it for a long time. As he is talking, the officer suddenly gets up and points a gun at him. The door opens and Ivan walks in slick. Ivan pins him down. Slick carves something with a knife on the hobo's chest while the officer tells him he is on their side as well. After that, two other police officers throw him out of the station. They throw him in a dumpster. They make fun of him as he moans in pain. In the following scene, Abby is on a sidewalk at night. 
She is making a deal to prostitute herself to a man inside a car. She is talking to him when the hobo appears and falls on her. He is badly injured, she looks at his chest carving and takes him home to help him. At home, she cleans up his wound as they talk to each other. He tells her that she is smart and should be doing something else like teaching, rather than selling her body. He tells her about the struggle between his brain and body. After that Abby tells him to get some rest. She takes him to a bedroom where he lies down and starts telling her about bears. She listens eagerly, he drifts off to sleep after a while and she leaves the room after covering him with a blanket. The next day, the hobo is walking down the street where he sees a lot of violence everywhere. He keeps going and walks over to the man with the camera from earlier. The man asks if he's back for the money. He makes him break a bottle over his head and chew on the broken glass while he films. He then throws the money down and makes him pick it up with his mouth. Back at her apartment, Abby wakes up on her couch to see a picture of a bear on her coffee table with a note saying, thanks for the bed. This makes her smile. Back in town, the hobo walks to the pawn shop. He looks at the lawnmower longingly. As he is standing inside, a bunch of robbers break in. They start threatening everyone inside and demand money from the cashier. In the meantime, the hobo finds a shotgun in the shop and shoots the robbers down. After killing them, he buys the gun from the store owner and walks out. He walks down to the man with the video camera and points his gun at him. He makes him eat his videotape and hits him over the head with the shotgun. In the next scene, a man is forcing an injured girl into prostitution and he tries to force himself on her. But the hobo shows up and shoots him in the face, helping the girl to escape. In the following scene, some men are torturing girls as they are chained to the roof. They are about to kill them when the hobo shows up with the gun in his mouth. He takes the gun out of his mouth and shoots the men dead. Because of his heroic ventures, he is all over the news. He is going all over town, killing child predators and criminals with his shotgun. Drake is not happy about this. He shoots the TV with his handgun when he sees the news. He turns around and asks his son what happened to him as topless girls torture a man in the background. After asking him, he hypes his son up to kill the hobo for revenge as he cuts open the man being tortured in the back. The next day, Slick and Ivan walk into a school bus. Slick lights the bus on fire, burning all the kids to death. People are watching the news on a TV in the street. But Drake and his sons show up on the news station and kill the news anchor. They show everyone the burnt body of a kid on air. They threaten everyone to do the same to them, unless they bring them the hobo's head. The police and citizens come together and start killing all the hobos and homeless people in town. Amidst the chaos, Abby is walking down the street. She is spotted by two police officers. They decide to get her for the night but she refuses them. One of them starts chasing after her and gets a hold of her. He pushes her up against a dumpster and tries to rape her when the old hobo arrives just in time. He points his shotgun at his head and blows it off. He keeps shooting him until Abby stops him. After that he starts to walk her home but all the people in the streets start running towards them, to kill him. Abby helps him escape by hiding him in a dump of body parts and guts. As he is getting out of the dump, Isaac sees him and reports it back to Slick and Ivan. Back at the apartment, the hobo tells Abby that he always wanted to buy a lawnmower and start his own business. She tells him that they can run away from this town and do that. Hence they decide on leaving town. Back in the streets, Ivan and Slick show up to where Isaac called them. They give him cocaine in return for his help. Back at Abby's place, she starts to pack up to leave the town because they are in danger for killing the cop. He tells her they can hop on a train and find a job somewhere so they should pack light. They are about to head out when they hear the two brothers come in wearing ice skates. They burst into the door and start hitting the hobo. Slick pushes Abby against a wall and puts his fingers in her mouth. To save herself, she picks up a piece of broken glass from the floor. She uses it to slash Slick's face and run inside her bedroom. This makes him livid, he advises his brother not to kill the hobo without him as he follows Abby. Meanwhile, Ivan slams his ice skates into the hobo's back, as they fight. Inside, Slick starts to cut Abby's neck with a saw. While in the kitchen, the hobo is also trying to get away from Ivan and manages to electrocute him with an appliance. While doing that he hears Abby's screams and walks inside to help her. Back in the kitchen Ivan gets up and comes to the bedroom door but Slick tells him to go away. In the next scene, Slick walks out in the street with the hobo pointing a gun at his crotch. Ivan drives off in the meantime. Slick is pleading with the hobo not to shoot his crotch. The hobo does it anyways. After that, Slick calls his father to inform him that he is shot and dying. As he is on the phone, a school bus appears in front of him. It is on fire and the hobo locks Slick inside it to kill him. After getting rid of him the hobo shows up at the hospital with a very injured Abby. He forces the hospital staff to help her and they desperately try to save her life. Meanwhile, 
Drake sends his men to find him so he can take revenge. After a struggle, the doctors manage to save Abby's life. She is lying in her hospital bed where the hobo gives her some flowers in a little pot. He explains that they will help her to remember him as he gets up to leave with his shotgun. She tells him that he can't solve all the world's problems with his shotgun. He replies that this is all he knows. As he is walking out of the hospital, a kid in a wheelchair sees his shotgun and starts to scream. He walks away from him to a maternity ward and looks at the babies from the glass window. He starts talking to them about how bad their future will be if they grow up in this town. He hopes that maybe they can grow up to be hobos with shotguns, like him. Meanwhile, Drake's robots break into the hospital. They start killing and torturing the staff, hanging them from the ceiling. Hobo hears the disturbance. He quietly walks out to see hanging corpses on the ceiling along the halls. He makes his way to Abby's room. He takes off the sheets on her bed to reveal one of the men hiding there. While Abby is held behind a curtain, they force him out of the hospital and put him in a trunk to take him away. As they take him away Abby notices he left his shotgun. Back at their place, the men are handling a giant octopus as the hobo watches from a little window of the cell they put him in. Ivan walks in and orders his men to put him in the truck while the hobo tries to rile him up. In the meantime, Abby takes the hobo's gun. She breaks into a store and prepares for a fight. When she leaves the store a lot of people show up and ask if she's homeless, so they can kill her. She gets up on the bench and gives a long speech in the favor of homeless people after which, she walks away. In the streets, Drake puts on a show for the people. He gets robot men to bring the hobo to him. They bring him and put a manhole lid over his head. They start to walk him to the manhole, while he explains how everyone fears him. They push him inside the hole. A man ties one end rope around his neck and the other on a bike. They are about to decapitate him but Abby shows up with her shotgun and threatens them. Ivan tries to deal with her but Drake kills him for being a useless son. Drake sends his robots after her. She destroys them and saves the hobo's head from being decapitated by cutting the rope just in time. Drake gets a hold of her and shoves her hand in a car propeller. This rips her hand to shreds. As screams in agony, she manages to pull out one of the propellers and stabs Drake with it. She gets away and helps the hobo get out. Everything around them is on fire as one of the robots shows up, saying that if Abby killed Drake, she had to replace him. The hobo refuses and the robot walks off. The hobo runs over to Abby and asks her if she's okay. Then he walks up to Drake who is lying on the ground wounded. He points his gun at him, but the cops show up. The spectators and cops all point their guns at the hobo and warn him not to shoot Drake. But he ignores them and blows his head off with his shotgun. Right as he shoots, everyone else opens fire and loads of people including the hobo are killed on the spot, as Abby screams bloody murder in the background and the movie ends here. I hope you enjoyed today's movie and were as hooked on the madness as I was. Thank you for watching.